just fall in love with film, just want to be a filmmaker. I personally think that one leads to the other. After my last CXE examination, I have nothing to do. So like by my grandmother downstairs, my older cousin used to live. He had a, not a big collection, but like 20 DVDs. And I just grabbed all of them and just went through them in alphabetical order. Godfather, Apocalypse Now, Goodfellas, Fight Club. I can't tell you why, but like, I just couldn't stop watching. Now, Godfather, it was a ad on radio. There's only one man who carries a name, and he is Marlon Brando, the Godfather. And then they had a nice little tune there. I was really intrigued. I remember the poster coming out with the guy with the, like the puppeteer. I mean, I saw him before that, I think, but um, that was the one that impacted on me the most. exhilarating and thrilling, the calamities and disasters and successes in a moment like the making of Apocalypse Now, that's, that's a real gift. Yeah, I'm anxious. I'm nervous about what I'm going to do for work, for the time, but in terms of entering the film industry, I don't even know there's like that much of a established film industry to enter, one that welcomes new people into it, whatever that means. Uh, my favorite fl film would be uh, Die Hard 4, um, famous actor Bruce, Bruce Willis. Um, hmm. I think it has to be like Back to the Future. Back to the Future, yeah. Um, it's a claymation movie actually called Mary and Max. Pretty Woman. My favorite film is Transformer. Nightmare Before Christmas. The Phil Poulter, guys. Well, Indiana Jones. Madea goes to jail. Drumline. One of my favorite films has to be Gladiator by Ridley Scott, yeah. One of my uh, favorite filmmakers would be uh, Michael Bay. Justin Lin. James Wan. I really like M. Night Shyamalan. He's really cool. Steven Spielberg. Jordan Peele. Um, Tyler Perry. Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Um, three local filmmakers would be, I don't know any right now, but after this interview, hopefully I'll look them up. So if they come up again, I could answer it. Okay, no, I don't really know any local filmmakers. No. No, I can't. Local? I know no local filmmakers. Can't. Can't. Maximus Dan. Marshall Mantano. And Ellis. Well, the film industry, or if you call it that, is a subset of Trinidad and Tobago and issues that. Uh, unresolved or un, um, have not been confronted in Trinidad and Tobago are the same uh, going to permeate the same film industry too. Gender, race, class, age, geographic location. So what we are really doing, having not resolved that in Trinidad and Tobago and in this, the arena of cinema, is we are projecting our pathologies and not exploring them. It's hard to say it was, was authentic. Mm -hmm. Like, um, yeah, they sat here, they have our accents. Me personally, personally, I think it's not films that come from within Trinidad. Yeah, they made here, but it's them grabbing culture or film skeletons from outside. And that's fine, but if you watch stuff like Cuba, like Cuba's amazing, right? Like Haiti, Cuba, Latin America, they make really good stuff. And they make stuff that it is a Cuban film. It's not a Trini version of a popular Western film. And we're stuck like that. One thing that I think was missing completely is while they called for film industry all the time, they never mentioned film culture. And I think that's most important because an industry is just a mechanical thing in people's imagination. 
but what kind of film culture are you developing? Because in other words, what is the content going to look like? What path should we really follow? What is our destiny? What is our identity? What are we? Who are we? Who are we? What are we? We have a responsibility to tell genuine, authentic stories of our region that don't just revolve around the beach and palm trees and parties and sports heroes. I mean, I think that's what people think of when they see, think of the Caribbean. They think of Usain Bolt. They think of gang warfare based on drugs. Of marijuana. Or they think of beaches and paradise. I mean, <laughs> it's a horrible, there's absolutely nothing in between. You want to talk about Trinidad is a it, relative to Jamaica, Haiti, Cuba. It's very recently established nation. We were kind of settled post-slavery. They're not going to have, have as deep a sense of um, national identity, if you want to use that term. We're not going to have that as as um, as solid a sense of that. We don't haven't had historic experience. Every time you look at local productions from the Caribbean or from Trinidad and Tobago in particular, what you see are ads and music videos. So when you see ads that have this idea of perfection and beauty being shoved at you all the time, and the only other thing you're seeing is crime, because that's what you're seeing in the news. How do you develop a way of seeing stories outside of those two paradigms? You know, if you and I could get together, we could win an election. Nigger and Kuli don't get together in politics, man. Shit! Rounding off into the 70s, you would have really seen BIM, which is a critical... I think BIM was a flashpoint because that's the first time that we had an indigenous feature. BIM is important in the sense that, yes, we've been into stuff that didn't change, right? You know, um, cultural differences in Trinidad. Looked at the cultural disparity between black people and Indian people, stuff that's still going on now, right? <laughs> Hugh Robertson, director, was an American, known for Midnight Cowboy, which is a big Bosco Willing film. And he set up shark productions, soundstage, and Chagaramas. It took a foreigner to make a movie that commented on very local issues. And I have an issue with that. It's kind of like, why does a foreign eyes need to comment on something that's so obvious? So... Like I said before, we're a very polite culture and we, we like to hide shit. So like, no, 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 don't argue too loud the neighbor might hear. Let me build a wall in front. Well, you know that story. We need to criticize ourselves. I think it's, as an industry, it's easy to think you're the best because you're competing around a developing industry, right? And if your standard is the filmmaker next to you, then growth is slow. I don't think there are good avenues for critiquing our local um, film. There are no focus groups. The film goes to a festival and people go see it and then people comment on it after in their own little circles. But there's no professional critique of them to say pull industry professionals together, have them view the film and then formed professional opinion to critique. How much self-examination, how much reflection was taking place, how much were we talking about making these films, comparing notes, critiquing our screenplays. A lot of it was just come up with something, get the money, get it out there, get it in a film festival, 
And that's the end of the story. But the thing about it is, no. That's why I talk about film culture. Because film culture was really us examining these things. A local movie will come out. It has its, its merits. But it's saying again, praise. Like, oh, it's so good, blah, 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 blah. Even from people who make movies who I know for a fact then saw a lot of problems with it too. And there's a way to be nice or, or creatively critical. And like you said, the French New Wave, those guys were brutal to each other. Brutal, brutal, brutal. And, but that's how you get thicker skin. That's how you evolve. I would say I don't want to be a dot, dot, dot. Like, I don't want my film to be good, dot, 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 for a local film. Yeah, it was fun, dot, 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 for a local film, no production value, blah, blah, blah. We should be honest with ourselves. We should also be realistic. Most people say, or most people are, are adverse to critique because they don't like who's critiquing them or they don't think that that person can critique them. And that's a lot of ego getting in the way. Uh, most times, it's ego. When you're in something, it's impossible to be objective. You either just want to finish it, or you're so proud that you actually finish it, and it's what you had in your head is kind of was on screen, that you lose all sense of objectivity. Even within television, eh, you find that there's no, there's no real critique of stuff. It, an email will pass around to a couple of people, but there's no pulling of different interest groups or audience segments to critique your work. Well, we are completely immersed in our entire lives, basically, in Hollywood fair, which is assembly line stuff with a particular, with billions of dollars pumping behind it. Um, there's a certain plasticity and all of that, but they have a particular, it's like food, man. We accustomed to this diet. We're not accustomed to consuming film products of our own much. So when we taste our own hand, we get sick sometimes. You told me to give you a call just before nine o'clock. You want to try some Zabaka with that bacon and eggs? You've got to go to work out. Oh, no. Sorry, you've got to... Why do you always call it Zabaka when then it's avocado? So many white people would just call it avocado. I knew it as Zabaka. And furthermore, it don't grow in this country, bruh. That's what the natives call it back in Trinidad, but we only use it as an imperative. <laughs> what is that? Something to eat? It's like you could be throwing up, you could be sick because you just don't eat that food. It become, you are a stranger to yourself. The familiar stuff is whatever we grew up with from, I don't know, um, Sesame Street to, to um, the latest film in the cinema from Hollywood. did a documentary called Inward Hunger on Eric Williams. And a very good friend of mine, when he watched the documentary, said, you know, I realize I know nothing about Eric Williams. I know plenty more about Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy, but I know nothing. That's not right. And that's for somebody of the caliber and national importance of Eric Williams. We, we don't even know the story of Eric Williams. How is that even possible? So what we are about identity-wise, if you just look at how often we appear on screen to ourselves, it's a drop in the ocean. So you have self-negated. You have invalidated yourself. So that's a hell of a way to be, because that's going to say a very strong term now. But that self-negation is self-hatred, man. Who do you love? I don't know who my neighbor is, but I know who Beyonce is. What did Beyonce ever do for me? I think local cinemas should push local films more. Just like the drive we have for more local um, play on the radio networks. The cinemas should have that same push from the public and the government to support what is ours. Film is umbilically connected to the society and it reflects that. And until you come to front that and come to terms with it, you will not be able to produce these films that we need. You also, you have to have the self-belief. If you think foreign is better, then who's going to buy your stuff, including your own people? That's the question, like, yeah, it's a local film. But when you look into it, when you go to work on the set, every above-the-line role is not a local. That's a big issue why they don't feel local, because maybe the director, the DP, the editor isn't a local person engrossed in our culture. 
So there are people I know here who would work as camera operators and DPs and directors. But when a foreign crew comes, they're a best boy or grip, you know, something like that. Because more emphasis is placed on those roles and specializations coming from a first world country than a third world country. I think that's a deeper issue. Like we just don't, we have the need to have a foreigner in control, even in the arts. You're telling me that a tourist up here knows Trinidad? So we should, a Hollywood executive knows the Caribbean like you do? He doesn't, all right? Does he know about pitching marbles or collecting cards? Now they have the same thing here. Baseball cards, our cards were gum cards for, for like Knight Rider. Right. Or, uh, you know what I mean? Like that's that we have the same thing. So there's a connection that can be made, but the, it's, it's very different. Some good foreign filmmakers could come. I have no problem with that. But to predominate that way and we have we, are, we kind of doing little things and little small roles on a, you know, on a, a, a visiting itinerant thing. No. Why are you going to Canada, U.S.? No, you can. And if, if it was, I have no problem with that either if you're in a functional space. But if you're always deferring to some sort of um, kind of secret source from abroad all the time, what happens to the, 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 the fruit that's dying on the vine here? Because it's not real talent. We always talk about the brain drain. I'm always thinking external who was lost to and empower the metropoles and the other economies. But did we ever think about what I call the internal brain drain? So how much dreams and power and talent was lost on inside here, wasted? So I'm more concerned about that. There's this bigger issue of, yeah, we need more local films, but we need more local films that are truly local in front, behind the camera, and within the story of the film. Because it doesn't make sense we get a bunch of movies that's not from us. We need, uh, I'd rather have three great local movies than 10 okay movies made here done by people who are not from here. One word to describe what it's like getting funding in Trinidad, relationship. So you may expand on that. It's either a good relationship or an abusive relationship. Either way, you're sticking with it. And right now, my husband beating the shit out of me. And I can't get out of it because I love film so much. And I know he will change one day. But I, I just take in the licks. Our film industry is small. And really and truly, there's a, a clique of people that would have control of the film industry or the access to funds to even produce films. You see it over and over. You see, like, the same producers getting funding who happen to be within a certain section of Trinidad, which is before the lighthouse. I can question, I have a lot of questions about who those players are and who the state um, ultimately funded, because I believe there's a lot of um, elitism that took place. And there were complaints, and people say they feel shut out, like outside children, Jeffrey Allen is one, I can call his name. But I do think that classism um, plays a big role in who controls how much of the industry. Classism, racism, colorism, you know, these are all things that play a part. I mean, not too long ago, you wouldn't see people my color really in TVCs, you know, my complexion. Um, 
as close as they got was the agency Brown. And uh, funding is a real tricky thing because the economy is a shit. And the little bit of funding they have, I would like them to spread it out a little bit. Do not even have to be me? I would just like to see different faces. I really believe in something I call citizen cinema. Given a small population of a million plus, you have to mine talent. You'll have to spread that net as wide as possible to find the best people, best talent. That position that is very small. Um, and if you keep creating films that, from that perspective, then for the rest of Trinidad to want to watch it, and they're like, yeah, but that's... Like, every movie I see in is, like, in the streets of town. It's not honest to them. And I'm not saying you have to make movies that not you, but you should make movies to represent everybody. And if you stuck in that one part of Trinidad, shooting in that one coastline, it becomes um, familiar, but not in a good way. And... Uh, so it's very complicated because these people have track records. I agree you should support them because they get movies done. But I do agree you should spread it out a little bit and embrace our entire culture. Ge like the geography of Trinidad and the culture of Trinidad. But my greatest concern is, is, this, is there equity here? And is, is, are all of Trinidad and Tobago going to be caught up in this net of, of possibilities and funding and so on. And I, I, to me, honestly, I don't see that happen. But in terms of the people who control the money, the resources, it's still those of the lighter hue. Mm, that's very difficult. I don't do that. I don't make money off a completed film. There really is a profound lack of organizational um, infrastructure to support the industry. Anywhere from the fact that television producers and directors have to pay for airtime to get their content broadcast, which makes television programs less appealing for investors, which means it's harder to raise the money for a television program. It's less appealing also because there's no back-end profit to be made. It's very difficult to make a profit on television shows. Uh, because in more traditional models of broadcast, you know, you pitch your idea, the money comes in uh, from a television station or an, or an investor, the television station then acquires or licenses the content and then the, the content continues to be licensed through syndication, as is the case with Friends. The reason why a show like Friends has made so many people so rich is because of this syndication and licensing model. Um, but that simply just doesn't exist in the Caribbean. Okay. Um, why would television stations not want to take the chance or, of implementing a system? Which television station is going to start it? Um, you tend to find that uh, although television stations are competitive, the CEOs of these stations meet regularly to decide upon certain things, whether it be rates, even though you may hear TV6 or CNC3 have different rates, there are boundaries that you would not cross. So for one media house to say they're taking that responsibility upon themselves, I don't think that would happen. I think they would have to come together um, to form some kind of body that actually seeks that interest to make a way that is open for all filmmakers and for other local products that the media houses themselves produce. Until there is a licensing agreement with broadcasters, the idea of having profits will remain just an idea. Um, that being said, all filmmakers should make it a habit to budget themselves into their budgets so that they have something to live on while they're making a project, while they're developing a project, etc. Um, yeah. What options are available to filmmakers to get their content on television?
keep making your films. That's the one thing. When you stop doing that, then you there's nothing. When you make a film, I could be criticizing filmmakers here and their content, you know, but there's something to criticize, right? It exists. If it doesn't exist, then you're not even worth, you, there's no films. You're not a filmmaker. So filmmaking is about making films. Right, and if Trinidad wants to compete, it needs to share so that it can get that collaboration and that exercise and make more films versus heavily budgeted films. So maybe that's the key. Like, let we not take all the money and put it into a show bet, which is not a show bet. Let we split, shred the money up and make honest, small, not perfect films that speak to people and show other people stuff they may have never seen before. Um, I mean, it's a nice idea. I don't know if it'll work, but let me try. Let me make 10 micro-budget movies instead of one $1.5 million movie. Right? So the only way to get good at filmmaking is to make as many as you can. Right? And then you start to learn where you fail, and then you start to see your strengths and your weaknesses. Then you can identify those areas and strengthen them right uh, or grow from them but if we are so caught up with budget like filmmaking was is not wasn't a profitable thing like i say the filmmaking came first then the money became the thing after when everything else is taken into consideration all that really matters is um the act of creation but molly before he died he making his last album he sang um, these songs of freedom, right, is all I ever had. He didn't talk about women and children and cars and money, fame. He said, all I had, was all I ever had is songs of freedom. A musician, all they'll ever have is their songs. All you'll ever have is your music. All you'll ever have is your films. And everything else is Lanya. That's it. Pressure. My mother and my father, I want a pressure.